So the reaction has to stop as soon as one of the two materials run out. That's a little bit about combustion in a closed system. The combustion of phosphorus to produce P4 uh, O10. Uh, all right, so let's see what else can we do. Uh, here we go. Let's try this one. Like I said, you like combustion, so let's talk a little bit more about combustion. Uh, I have here, I have here a material, I have a watch glass, a watch glass. I have here a highly combustible material. This material is called lycopodium, lycopodium. It's actually spores from a type of plant. This lycopodium is very highly combustible. And so I am actually going to take and I'm going to light the lycopodium. Friends assure me that the lycopodium is combustible. Light the lycopodium. My lycopodium won't burn. What does my lycopodium need in order to burn? Oxygen. This very fine powder, as it lays there on the table, cannot get the oxygen uh, that it needs in order to burn. But if I were to disperse this material, if I were to disperse this material in the air, I'm going to add my lycopodium there. I'm going to use this as a flame source. Now, this has nothing to do with it. This is just so I don't have to hold it. You know, I could do this with a candle. I'm going to take a little bit of lycopodium. Now disperse that lycopodium in the air, the combustion is dramatically different. Dispersing the lycopodium in the air makes it combust much more readily. Now this can be a problem in a lot of different areas. Places like grain elevators. If you get dust in the air and you have a spark, you can have a disaster take place in your grain elevator or in a coal mine. So, it's not just the powder, it's actually having the material dispersed in the air so that it can burn very easily. So that's a little bit about the effect of surface area on combustion. I've been doing that demonstration for, I don't know, 10 years for my students. The other year at Christmas, I got a gift. And as soon as I got the gift, I knew exactly what it was intended for. If to, in order to burn like opodium, all I need is a jet of air to disperse the lycopodium and a flame, the other year for Christmas, I got a Nerf gun. <laughs> now, my Nerf gun is now fitted with a torch at the end for a flame. <laughs> it has a reservoir of lycopodium, so the puff of air the Nerf gun goes into the container and should jet the lycopodium out through the end. If I have my torch lit, we should get combustion. So, let's see how our lycopodium combustion works with a Nerf gun. Now, my seals aren't quite as good as they used to be, so we got to pump this up pretty good. So we're going to give this a good shot to see if we can get the pressure we need to inject the lycopodium. This one here is a questionable one. On occasion, this thing just backfires a big puff of yellow smoke in my face. So we'll see whether or not we actually get combustion with our lycopodium. We need a little bit of flame here. So we'll try it. The lycopodium combustion. Three, two, one. Oh my god! I threw the lycopodium right off! That's not good! Hold on! We gotta outfit that baby here. We'll see if we can get that back on. Fire marshal's here. Hey, where? 
My name is Dr. Smith. <laughs> Anybody asks? Dr. Dr. Rick? Smith's chemistry magic show. All right, let's try pumping this baby up again. We must have had too much pressure that time. That had to be it. A little bit of glycoponium. A little bit of air pressure. We'll see whether or not we get combustion. We don't want to light it. We got to get our torch, yeah, we knew that. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I fired it without the torch lit either. All right, let's try this one more time. See if our lycopodium combustion occurs. I'm going to hold my little thing on here, see if it's safe. All right, three, two, one. Hey, not bad. A nerf gun works pretty darn good as a flamethrower. <laughs> All right, so, lipo podium combustion. There we go. A little bit of a mess down there, not too bad. Won't be our first mess. Won't be our last mess. All right, so let's see, what else we got here? Um, uh, let me do this one. All right, let's take a look at another combustion. You seem to like those so much. Um, you guys don't have anywhere to go, do you? Nope. We got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff to do here. All right. Um, this one, however, I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer with a dollar. I need a volunteer that has a dollar. Who says I don't have a dollar? I'm looking for someone. Oh, look at this guy over here. He's got his dollar in hand. You ever seen this magic show before? He's got his dollar. He's too prepared. Come on down here. What's your name? What is it? Zach? All right. Come on down, Zach. We know you must have a dollar if anybody's planning on coming to Clarkson University. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to do a combustion experiment. We're actually going to use this material here, TATP, triacetone triperoxide. It's actually an explosive material. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, place your dollar right there on the table. We're going to take, we're going to place a little bit of this TATP on Zach's dollar. Now. <laughs> Okay, we got the TATP on Zach's dollar. Here, you need to hold this for a second. There's your, there's your flame, there's your stick. Now, you, before he does anything, what does he need? Uh, gotta have safety goggles. Okay, so I have a pair of safety goggles here. For Zach. All right, so you can put those on. Terrific, all right. Now, what you need to do is you need to stand out here. You may wonder what your job is. Your job is not to light the dollar bill. Your job is to hold the dollar bill. There we go, I'm gonna do the lighting. So you wanna hold that way out away from your face. All right, terrific. Now, I have the long stick, so I don't have to be anywhere near it. 